Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and this is the New Year Booktuber tag. I believe Justin created this tag. I'll leave Justin's channel down below. I love Justin. I think she made this last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and these are some great questions that I would love to answer for y'all today. Their answer is just talking about your plans for reading and whatnot for this upcoming year for 2024. So the first question is, what are you most excited about in 2024? I have a few things. Um, number one is just living. <laughs> living my life, doing things, possibly going out places, meeting new people. Like I'm just trying to widen my horizon with life. A lot of my life has been cooped up at home, reading or puzzling or doing things, which those are fun. I love doing those things, but I also want to venture out more and find new experiences and meet new people and have more fun. I'm also excited for certain projects that I'm working on right now that are just in the works that, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for those things. I'm excited to possibly move it's a high probability that I'm moving this year. Last one that I have is like reading whatever I want. I just want to read whatever I want. I'm excited to just read. I'm excited for all the new releases that I'm really excited for this year. Um, I'm looking forward to all those things. Question number two is, do you have a Goodreads challenge goal and why that number? I always do 200 books, even though for the past three years, I've surpassed that goal like significantly. I've almost hit 300 this year. Um, just because I never know what life's gonna bring me. I never know if an emergency will pop up, if my chronic illness will flare again, if something happens with my job, whatever the case may be. Like I don't wanna feel burdened by not reaching that goal. And I feel like 200 is pretty feasible for me. And also I'm not the type of person that really cares if they hit their goal or not. If I do, awesome if i don't it's not the end of the world i do not care i don't care how many books i read in a year and i don't care if i meet my goodreads goal question number three is list three five star predictions so for new releases two new releases that are definitely gonna be five stars like i know it is crescent city three by sarah j mass house of flame and shadow we're all dying for that release um chloe lisa's last book in the bergman brothers series so i think it's called only in forever that one comes out later this year dying for it that one is about a hero who's been like obsessed with romance books so i think i'm gonna love his romance and then one that i'm hopefully gonna be reading this year that i think will be just fantastic is unlikely match by laura bradbury this is own voices for um transplants um the heroine needs a transplant of some sort in this book it's a romance with a guy i don't really know what it's about but i have a feeling i have a gut feeling about this book I feel like it's gonna be five stars. Um, I think it has really good representation and um, own voices rep books always, always get to me. Question number four is what genre, subgenre, or trope do you want to read more of? Um, first is definitely historical romances. I already have a goal in how I'm going to be reading historical romances coming up in 2024. I talked about it in my January TBR video. I'm gonna read one historical from my shelves like physically a month and do a dedicated reading vlog for my channel members every single month so i already know that i'm gonna be reading more historicals so i just want to love that genre again and i have noticed a few of my friends here on booktube have been saying the exact same thing they want to get back into love with historical romances so i'm glad we're all on the same page with that when it comes to tropes i want to read more surprise pregnancy romances i actually found out that i think i really love this trope if it's done well and i want to read more I'm definitely in the mood. Out on a Limb and Lizzie Blake's Mess Mistake were like two of my favorite reads of last year. I really enjoyed those. They were like standout books for me. And um, those both had the surprise pregnancy trope and I loved them. So I feel like I do like that trope if it's done well. So if you have any really good surprise pregnancy romances, link them down below, please. Question number five is what trope do you think will be the most popular in 2023? I mean, you never know. I honestly think that hockey romance, like sports romances are probably gonna stay up top like they most of the time are. <laughs> so I have a feeling about that, like hockey specifically, but in general, just sports romances. And what I am hoping for is we'll get a resurgence in historical romances because Bridgerton season three is coming out later this year. So I'm hoping that more people get into historicals because that would be fantastic. Question number six is name three bookish goals for the year. Number one is to read more unknown authors. So authors I've never heard about before. I feel like a lot of people right now, we're all reading books and authors we, we know and love, which nothing is wrong with that. I love so many of the authors that so many other people love, but I also want to try and find like hole in the wall authors, authors I've never heard about before, authors I think I could possibly love um, because I, I just wanna do that. Like, you know what I mean? I just wanna find new authors 
that write amazing books. Another goal is to reread more. I reread a few books towards the end of 2023 and I had so much fun. Like they're just like a giant warm hug or like a cool pool you slide into, like gives you a warm cozy hug. Okay, when you reread a book, they are just a comforting. And sometimes in my life when I don't know what to pick up, like I think I'll just pick up a book that I already love um, because it I think it shows me in the times where I don't know what to read or if I even like reading. Like you get that frustrating moment when you're a reader. You're like, how come I'm not liking any of the books I'm reading? Like I'm not loving any of these. Like what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? And then you pick up a book that you already love, that you know you love, you reread it and all those thoughts just go away. <laughs> you're like, this is what reading means to me. So um, I definitely want to reread some more books. And the third one that I have is read more disabled voices. I think I have this goal like every single year, read more disabled voices. And I'm really hoping that it can tie into my first reading goal that I have, which is to like find new authors that are disabled um, because I just, I want to shine a light on those people because they're amazing. So yeah, read more disabled voices, read about disabled characters more, just more disability, chronic illness, neurodivergent representation. Question number seven is name three personal goals for the year. I do have three listed, but I do actually have like, I made a whole entire video for my channel members already. <laughs> that's like already out where I talk about all of my goals for the year. I included like bookish and personal goals, like maybe too many personal goals. That was maybe a little too personal with my channel members. Um, but I talk about a lot of my personal goals in that video. Um, but I'll mention like three here. Number one is to save money get on a budget, an even stricter one that I am right now um, because I plan on moving over the summer and I want everything to work out. Like I want to live a fulfilling, stable life in the new area that I'm moving to. The second goal that I have personalized is to comment on more booktube videos. I made this goal like years ago and I stuck to it for a while, but I wanna get back into it because I actually love, I love supporting my friends. I love supporting the booktube community. And um, I want to post a comment, put a comment on every single video of my friends that my friends make. I want to support them. I want to show them that I'm there, that I'm listening, that I'm watching, that people are supporting them. So leave a comment on every video that I watch. Even if it's just a little emoji or something, like I want to show my support in any way possible. So I want to comment on everyone's videos. The third goal that I have um, kind of like weaves together. It's kind of like two, but it weaves together. So um, have a better Instagram aesthetic. Um, I want my Instagram to be more cohesive and aesthetically pleasing. And I'm already like on the road to doing that, I feel like. Another one is to just document my life more. Take more pictures of like maybe even the mundane things in life. Um, like make more memories, capture those memories. Um, Cause I have a horrible memory. I have the memory of a goldfish. Um, so <laughs> I really want to take more pictures, document my life more, whether that be writing, pictures, making a scrapbook, doing a journal. I don't really know what I'm going to do, but just document more. And then the last question is question number eight. What do you want to leave behind in 2023? <laughs> when it comes to books, I'm leaving behind rating them. I know, bizarre. Um, but I am in this era where I do not want to sit and stew on what to rate a book. If I know it's five stars, that I will be rating. I'll be giving the book a five star rating. If I don't know what it is below a five star rating or anything like that, I don't really care. I'm just not gonna rate it. Like don't leave a rating, don't leave a star rating. I might leave a review, I might not, I don't know. Like I just wanna enjoy reading now and I don't wanna sit and stew in a review anymore, you know? So I'm gonna leave behind rating books that I don't absolutely adore in 2023. I'm gonna still review them in videos that I make, but I'm not gonna be telling you my star rating anymore. Like I, I don't, I don't feel the need to do that anymore. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. Um, and I'm just not going to be leaving star ratings on Goodreads anymore. Um, I think if I review arcs and stuff, that might be a different story. Um, because the author specifically reached out to me to review their book, you know? Um, but in general, I don't think I'm going to rate books anymore unless they're five stars. And I'm perfectly okay with that. I love that. And then personal wise, how about dating crappy men? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, Loki though, yeah, dating crappy men. Um, but then my main one is um, not being so self-critical of myself. I am very self-critical. I feel like a lot of people would claim that they are self-critical, but I feel like I am sometimes to like a detrimental degree and I think it affects me and the way I communicate with people. And I don't want to be like that anymore. And it's easier said than done, right? Easier said than done. Um, but I really want to manifest that mindset in my mind and actually go forward with that. And what I'm passionate about what I want out of life like I want to be accepting of myself and not worry so much or be anxious about what other people think um, I think I am always going to be anxious my anxiety 
is gonna be with me for the rest of my life. I, I do have anxiety, I live with it, I struggle with it, but I just wanna be more calm in my thoughts and more accepting and loving of myself. That turned a little deep for you. Um, but anyways, that is my new year booktuber tag. Thank you so much, Justin, for creating this tag. I love all these questions. Let me know down below any of your answers to these and what your major goals are for 2024, whether it be book related or personal, I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what emoji are we gonna do? let's do a money money emoji because i'm trying to save some money in 2024 <laughs> but anyways uh thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all